Jesus Christ is born for us. Good, Good news, news, great joy. Welcome everyone this evening to the celebration of our Lord's birth. We pray that Christ will be born in your heart and in your life tonight as you hear again the good news for all people. Our thanks for musicians tonight, especially uh, Gus Zaccaro, who we just heard, also Dulcie Schoner, our keyboard minister, Scott Cook, cellist, Danny Ellis, soloist and choir director, and thanks to our choir and bell choir, as well as our altar guild uh, for decorating uh, for us tonight. Let us stand as we sing together our opening hymn number 283. Merry Christmas, everyone. We are so glad that you are here, and it's wonderful to worship and celebrate together on this grand night. So, my friends, what might this night be about? What might this ancient account of Jesus' birth have to say to us tonight? Well, it probably says many things to many people, and hopefully it will shine with endless possibilities of life and love for you, as it has for others across dozens of generations and thousands of years. But tonight, I'd like to share just one possibility, one piece of the story, that shown for me this year from the Christmas story. It is about hospitality, and maybe we could call it a crisis in hospitality, where it is missing in the story and where it is found. We might expect this holy story to be all about great hospitality, the welcome of the king, the son of David, but what we discover when first we are, are to hear it is the heartbreaking places where hospitality and welcome of the new child, the baby born to Jesus, Joseph and Mary, where that is missing. To start with, Mary and Joseph and the unborn baby are on the move. They travel at the most difficult time possible for Mary. And when they arrive at Bethlehem, their destination, there is no one to greet them, nothing warm to eat, no safe place to rest and birth a child, no welcome at all. Instead, houses are dark. Knocks at the door reveal no one who is able to take this poor couple in. Did people not even look at Joseph and Mary or have realized the desperate situation that they were in? The night is black. Their hope is dark. No one lets them in. Where will they find a safe place to rest out of the desert? This lack of hospitality and the mystery of it for the Holy Family reminds me for all the world of the crisis in our world right now in which we have seen and heard for the past number of months, the crisis of tens and hundreds of thousands of refugees afoot in our world without a place to stay and a permanent place to be. We know that a great many of them come from Syria and Afghanistan, where continuous war makes a stable life nearly impossible. We've seen thousands of fleeing people crammed into tiny rubber boats with flimsy life jackets on, in, hoping, in hopes that they can make that treacherous six-mile trip from Turkey to Greece, only to catch their breath again and keep going. And when they get to Greece, if they do, 
They find a country with its own economic troubles that has done its best to welcome these arriving throngs. And yet they too are a people who have little to share. And they hope that all these visitors are just passing through to countries to the north. The nations of our world have been in conflict over these fellow travelers, whether they should be welcomed or cast off, and if they should be welcomed, where they should finally reside, and who should take responsibility for them, and how many. These are political questions, of course, but they are also the questions of the Christmas story. Who will open the doors for Mary and Joseph and their unborn baby? Who will welcome them? Or will the doors be shut as they are for the refugees as they were for Mary and Joseph and the baby? It's ironic, perhaps, that I looked on the Lutheran World Relief um, internet site. It's a Lutheran World Relief is an international high impact disaster relief organization, and it has um, its greatest request every year for the greatest disasters and tries to focus there. Late in the summer, the greatest requests were for school kits for Syrian children, those who were what were needed the most. And when I looked last week, the school kits were gone because there are probably not many schools operating in Syria now. Instead, baby kits are the greatest need in the disaster areas of the traveling places of refugees, kits of diapers and diaper pins, t-shirts and a warm layer of clothes. It is babies who are in the greatest danger now, even as baby Jesus was in the greatest danger when his parents could not find a place to stay on the night that he was born. Soon after Christmas, we will talk more about how we can be of help to people traveling from country to country to find new homes in our world. One way that we will promise to show hospitality is to put as many baby kids together as we can and send them to Baltimore and then on to the places needed most. Other ways that the world is hospitable, countries open their doors with visas and passports. But we know the issues are not simple, and I'm not trying to make them simple tonight. It is just that the Christmas story itself challenges us to make the connection between the Christ child without a home, and every other child in the world without a home. So year after year, this ancient story challenges us with new questions, new to our world context, new to our lives, and yet as old as the world is, and deep as the problems of human nature throughout the ages. Will we open our hearts to the Christ child? Will we let a stranger find a home? Will, we find, will that stranger find a home in our hearts? This is a scary and dangerous thing to open one's heart to another, and especially to a stranger, someone we don't know from someone far away who speaks another language, eats different food, 
has a different kind of political outlook, maybe we can only open our hearts just a little bit. But that's enough of a start. The call for tonight is in fact to do that, to open our hearts to the stranger everywhere, not only the refugee, but the stranger in our own city, stranger perhaps right in the pew next to you, the person you don't know, the person you're a little put off by, wondering about. And yet, the opening of one's heart is the only way that we can discover the love that the Christ child has for us and for the world, and that the love that God gave to us by sending the Christ child to us so many years ago and so fresh again tonight. If you don't know how to open your heart, almost any baby can show you how. They can show you exactly how it's done, opening your heart to another. Babies have to do it to survive. And we may think that we don't, but we do. We do have to open our hearts to survive and to love. And so that we can come and welcome Christ, the newborn King, on this night and every night. Amen. Um.
Thank you.